Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and welcome to Six Ways to Start the Semester Right. I'm a professor, and I thought about this for a while and came to the conclusion it'd be a good idea to give some tips before we get too far into the semester and it's too difficult for you to catch up. Uh, I've seen over the years a lot of students start with all enthusiasm only to um, let things slip away. So I thought this might be a good idea if we give some tips and I'm going to give a series on learning and trying to get better marks in colleges and universities, post-secondary education. It could be applied anywhere, of course, uh, to uh, students that are wanting to learn to get better, to get smarter, to get faster at learning as well and with less effort. There truly, if you develop the right skill sets, it is less effortful. You don't have to put so much effort in it or as Greg McEwen would say, it's more effortless uh, in process. So let's take a look at what we're going to talk about today. Um, the things that we're going to talk about today are habits, 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 habits. That'd be number one. We're going to talk about knowing calendar due dates and values, values for assignments and tests. Note taking, some of the different ideas and thoughts that go into taking good effective notes. How to focus more better, like to be, build that skill set up where you can actually um, dive into something. So we'll talk about that and there's a lot there, more than ever in history on that. Uh, learn some study techniques that, that work for you. Everybody's different in how they learn and how they're comfortable learning. So every tip, it may not work exactly for you. You've got to figure out your personality, what works, and then tweak it and adjust it, iterate it over time. And then you come up with a really good process. And then you get really good at learning. And when you get really good at learning, it becomes more fun and you want to do more of it. And guess what? You learn more and then you become more effective, more successful in your careers. So this is building, not just to be good at during the semester, but building to be good in your career because everything is changing these days and changing faster than ever before. So this builds into a lot of things. Uh, get to know your professor before you need to know your professor. A little play on words there and we'll talk about that as well. So we'll, let's get down to it and go through these six uh, points. Habits, habits, habits. Now I'm going to do other video lectures on this topical area, but uh, to be quick about it today, it's a new semester, it's a new beginning, and that's a good time, believe it or not, the research shows, to institute a new habit. You know, you move somewhere, you come to a new location, that's not a bad time period to start new habits. Uh, COVID starts, it's not a bad time period to set new goals and priorities and new habits. Uh, and if you can set yourself up that you're creating good habits, that's going to, again, accelerate your level of successfulness. Uh, so it's fresh start. Keep that in mind. Keep that. It's the beginning of the semester. And you know what? You're going to backtrack. Things aren't going to go exactly the way that you planned. That's OK. Just reiterate, start again and rework it till it really becomes reinforced in that aspect. And, uh, you know, things, uh, some examples, where do we study, right? Uh, there's aspects of some people would like in a noisy environment, like a coffee shop or something like that. Other people uh, prefer absolute quiet. So again, this has got something to do with how you learn best. And you have to look at your own history and understand that what works best. Now, some of you are thinking, yeah, it works best for me if I've got my laptop open, I've got my iPad on, I got my phone on, I got my TV set up, and you're doing like four time, four things at once. That's not a good habit. That's just a distraction. And that ties to the other point that we have on focus. So you've got to look at, well, yeah, there's things that you're used to doing, but are they giving you the benefits that you're after? It takes a lot longer to study if you're trying to do multi, if you're in the habit of trying to do a multitude of different things. But if you figure out, you know, where where is my best location to study, set it up that you really enjoy that spot, like it feels comfortable to you, you enjoy that spot. It may even mean you, you make yourself a nice cup of tea or a coffee and you enjoy it while you're doing your, your studies, though that can be a good habit because it's helping you to and reinforcing you to do that particular item. When to study. 
Well, everybody's got different things going on. You know, you might be working two part-time jobs and trying to go to school and trying to figure out uh, when is the best time to study. Well, if you can figure out a steady time, like whether it's first thing in the morning at 6 a.m., whether it's at three to four daily, whether you've got, if you look at your schedule and you see that you've got two hour breaks here and there, you time block those and you make sure that you make it a habit to study during those periods. It works best, to be honest, when you've got it sort of at the same time, then it becomes a real routine. You know, when I wake up in the morning, well, people brush their teeth, right? So you get into the habit, if you get in the habit of brushing your teeth uh, when you wake up and when you go to bed or after each meal, you get in that habit and you don't even think about it. It's just, it's easy. It's effortless when it becomes like that. Whereas if you're kind of like all over the map, it's like, when do I, you know, and you got to think about it and it's taking too much of your brain power and then you don't actually do it. When you don't even have to think about it, you're just sort of already going to the spot. It's six o'clock. This is what I do at six o'clock. It works much easier. And for me, even myself, uh, you know, I've been a professor for many years, but I also have been a lifelong learner. I did like an MBA uh, part time. I did my business degree part time. Uh, more recently, I did the PMP designation and I got into certain habits of certain time periods during those those uh, different aspects. Like the degree was usually at night. My kids were small. I'd usually do it around 10 o'clock at night till about midnight. That was usually when I would every night I would do that. And the nice thing was, you know what, after I did it for about three weeks every night, kind of like then it was just sort of like, okay, it's 10 o'clock. All right, just go into it. And uh, that worked really well. And then it was sort of like when the school year ended, it's like, now what? Like I was feeling a little bit disrupted without having that habit there. So you could flip it into learning different stuff if you're not in a course, etc. You can use these things in a positive way, but really think about it. It's the start of a semester. Something's different. This is an opportunity to fit something in that flows with what you're doing. So give that that some uh, thought. And the time block af aspect, that's a whole area that we can discuss in another video, but time blocking is really helpful too. You say, in this period, I'm gonna do this. And you focus in on that during that time period. You don't let other things distract you. You focus in on that time period. And because you blocked it off, you're not letting something else uh, you know, your friend calls, oh, let's go to the park or let's go do this, let's go do that. You've got it blocked off. No, I've got, I've got this time blocked and you focus in on that. Otherwise, the time goes by and you do other things and it's like last minute you're trying to pull everything together and you're stressing yourself out. And that's not effortless. That's more pain if you want to look at it that way. Uh, number two, calendar and due dates and values. Okay, so I deal with thousands of thousands of students over the years, tens of thousands of students, to be honest. And I'm always uh, amazed at how many students don't really know what the quizzes are worth, what the assignments are worth, or the tests worth. And sometimes they just, they, they put as much effort into an assignment that's worth 5% of their mark as they do on a project that's worth 30% of their mark. Or they'll sacrifice a mark in another class that's worth 20% for an assignment in my class that's worth 5% when they could have easily let that one go if they were overwhelmed, right? So you've got to know, prioritize. This is the real world stuff too. A lot of these things in school, they're real world stuff, right? If you're on, working on a project in construction, as an example, you got to prioritize. If something is like urgent and important to do right now, that's what you hone in on. Uh, so look at the waiting, make sure you understand it and give yourself time for it. That also, the waiting helps to give you sort of an idea of how much effort and time it needs to take. And if something is weighted at 5% and it's going to take you days and days of effort and that's going to sacrifice something else that's worth 30%, you've got to think that one through uh, and uh, work it out that way. The other thing is because students don't really even know what the assignments are, when they're due, they're not paying attention to it. They let free marks go. Like, you know, very often I'll have quizzes online. And really what I'm trying to do is get students into a routine of reading the material, going through it, and just doing the quiz, not trying to sync them on the quiz. So most students that do the quiz do very well. But then if, and they're multiple choice quizzes, so the worst you're gonna do is like 25% if you go with probabilities. And if you're halfway there, like of understanding, you can usually pull out 50% and they don't even try it and it's just left blank. And then at the end of the semester, they've missed 
five quizzes and each one's worth 4%, they lost 20% of the mark. And let's say a pass is 60% and they had, you know, they could have had easily 70%, but now they're only getting 50%. They never did those quizzes. Got to know the weighting. Very, very important. It's the start of the semester. Figure it out. Look at your course outlines. Figure this out. And you can then look at your calendars. You can put the time frames of major assignments due. You can put reminders for when quizzes are on. Look, we're living in a day of uh, iPads and iPhones and smartphones and uh, all kinds of electronic things. We should use them to our advantage that we have pop-up reminders uh, so that we make sure that we at least submit these things when we're supposed to do them. And if it's something that's going to take me half an hour, I could go online and do that at that time. So make sure you don't give away free marks. Um, that's very important. So know the value of your assignments and test. Uh, the LMS, Learning Management System. I don't know what learning management system uh, you're using. You know, I work at uh, University of Toronto and George Brown College. One uses Blackboard, another one uses something called Quarkus, but they have calendars built into them. If you don't want to use your own calendar, like that's in your iPhone, uh, you can always use one of the calendars in the learning management systems. Some of them automatically will show assignments and quiz dates that have been entered by your professor on the actual calendar. So that can be a quick reminder if you know how to use it. So you got to just check out how that software um, works a little bit. I know it's another software to figure out, uh, but uh, it's not that difficult. So it, it, that could be worth your while or just taking your course outlines and entering it into your um, calendar on your phone. That would probably be the, the best one because you're more familiar with it. Note taking. I don't see anybody take notes the way they used to. I do. I shouldn't say that. I, I see students take notes, but um, the ones that I do are typically very good students. So that's the other thing. You can look at students that are really good and you can ask yourself, why are they so good at this? And a lot of times it's not that they got this natural born talent. Uh, I've seen it year after year. I've seen where I have uh, people that come into the program and they've had a construction background like as I teach construction management and they're really good in the beginning and the other students, they have no construction background and they don't know anything. And so the ones with the background, they're really good in the beginning, but they don't have very good study skills. Whereas the ones that just came in and didn't know anything, some of them have very good study skills. And so within about two semester, they're already passing that one that has experience in this because they've learned to learn. Remember that, learn to learn. It's probably the most important skill that you can build in your entire life. Because if you can do that, you can figure out anything. It's that I don't know this yet. It's not that I can't do math. I can't do math yet. It's a big difference. Uh, a lot of work done by Professor Dweck on that. Uh, so note taking. Take lecture notes. Write the notes down. Now, you got different choices. Well, that's the other thing. Uh, you know, you can, you can write it down in a notebook of some sort. I always have this journal that I write all my notes and everything into. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Uh, you can do it electronically uh, into a um, iPad or even an iPhone or smart device, whatever, your laptop. Uh, you can do it that way. Now, there is a difference. The research shows that writing, it connects better with memory in the brain than typing. I'm not sure exactly why, but it definitely... Uh, is much, much more memorable when you write it as opposed to when you type it. Doesn't mean you couldn't have, you know, a stylus and write it into an iPad. That would be just as good as writing it into a notebook. But um, typing, not quite as good, but definitely I would say a lot better than not doing anything. So I don't think there's that huge a margin between them. And then you can have hybrid, right? Like you could have where you've... Um, where you want to use electronic devices. Like I said, you could use a stylus. Uh, you could write it into your notepad. You could take a picture of it, insert it into a document. You could use one of the several programs for managing all your notes, um, such as uh, Evernote or um, uh, any of the other uh, applic productivity applications uh, that you could get, like OneNote, etc. 
um, to manage that. And then you can even insert hyperlinks from websites that you've done some background research, some things maybe the professor said that you looked up and you wanted to add to it. You could circle it and then add your own little sort of cloud notes to it. So there's different hybrid ways of doing that. And it's very helpful if you figure out what really resonates and works well with you. But to not take any kind of notes, I think is going to um, be a, a detriment to you and it's gonna take longer because just reading stuff, reading it, you can read something 25 times and it doesn't start to connect. You gotta mix it up and we'll talk about that in some of the other uh, videos. So you've gotta sort of uh, mix it up and there's a lot of learning techniques that you can use um, that helps you to mix it up. And we'll talk about, you know, taking multiple choice tests and testing yourself and coming up with your own questions and interleaving different bits of material over time and then how all these little neural networks are formed and how you connect the dots as you're learning all of a sudden you've got all these little isolated points of things you're learning but if you keep at it then all of a sudden the dots seem to connect and then things seem to light up for you and it, when it really lights up then you don't forget it which is a big difference than leaving things to the last minute cramming maybe getting through with a pass and forgetting it all next summer or next semester and then having to do it all again and you can't retain that information it's not as solid so this is what we're after is to start the semester off right so you start building these skills that'll take you further focus 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 i've already mentioned multitasking and multitasking there's no such thing as multitasking and doing it well really i think the research uh, that i've read uh very, very small percentage of people can do two things at once. Like it's very, very small percentage. So you're not one of them, more likely. I'm not one of them anyways, that's for sure. So multitasking does not work. You lose your focus and the time it takes to get onto something else and come back to that, it's a big time waster, right? And you don't have that much time. We talked about making this more effortless. So don't make it hard on yourself. This is what I tell my students. Do you want to enjoy Saturday evening? Do you want to go out with your friends uh, on Sunday? And do you want to do very well in the course? Well then work on building these learning skills so that it takes less time. It's going to take me eight hours to study for this test if I'm doing four other things at the same time and I'm still not going to really retain any of it or understand it. It would be much better if I had like, uh, instead of eight hours straight, cramming for it if I spread it out maybe over a week and I did it half an hour in the evening I'd be much better off I would retain it better I would learn it better and it's taken me a lot less time but I would have had to develop the discipline and the habits of splitting that up so that's that's where that comes in now that first bit takes some effort but those are efforts that you will build those skills for a lifetime and that will serve you very well so if you're after to try to save time and do things quicker, that is one of the best pieces of advice I can give in this first video. Uh, so time blocking, as I mentioned, works as well. Making sure that you've got set times, you've blocked it on your calendar, and this is what I'm, you treat it like it's a class. All right, 10 to 12 on Tuesdays, I don't have a class, I'm gonna study this, and you blocked it off, and when that time comes, you, that's what you're gonna do. Pomodoro technique also works and you can look this up. I'll do another video on this, but the Pomodoro techniques, it's named after a timer. Uh, what, it, what it basically is, is, well, we have trouble focusing these days, right? I have trouble focusing with all the distractions myself. I have to do some due diligence to be able to do as um, Professor Cal Newport would say, deep work. Uh, that's heavy, intense, really study concentration type work. That's not sort of superficial. Um, things and the Pomodoro technique involves setting a timer uh, they recommend in the Pomodoro technique 25 minutes but depending on you you can build that out to probably 40 or 45 minutes you might start off with like 10 or 15 minutes because you look at your phone every 30 seconds uh, so you might uh, start off with like uh, uh, 10 minutes and try to do 10 minutes and then when you build that up then 15 minutes and then when you build that up 20 and 25 but what it means is say at 25 minutes you take a five minute break five minute stretch break uh you know uh, bend uh stretch walk a little bit come back not a half an hour but five minutes and do another 25 minutes take another five minute stretch break right 
and you keep doing that uh, and then maybe every third or fourth break you take like a 20 minute or uh, yeah about a 20 minute break and then um, go back to it right so then you could grab yourself a coffee or something like that and because it's it's measured you're really focused for that time even when you stop for five minutes in the back of your mind there's still things going on with what you were studying but it does give you a little bit of a mental break if you need to catch up on an email you could do that during that time or a text uh, during that time and then you go back to focusing in and I would recommend uh, a timer better probably a digital one I find this one ticks a little bit um, but a digital one uh, works uh, really well but they have all kinds of apps there's Pomodoro apps for your phone my problem with with the phone is because I've tried them because they're kind of cool too you just set it and then it'll do the 20 minutes it'll ding and it starts on the five minutes automatically for you and then it'll start again on the the 20 minutes and it says how many do you want that's great but the only problem is you got to have all of your other notifications off because there you've got the phone right in front of you there's the temptation to use the phone so if you're if you're kind of inclined that that's going to distract you you're probably better with an actual timer uh, meditation well i'm just throwing that one out there here i know for myself it helps when i just have even 10 minutes in a day where i just practice focusing on breathing just helps to clear your mind and it builds your focus skill so you can build that up um, over time I haven't developed that into a very long practice but I know it's definitely helped to sort of calm you down get you sort of straight uh, and uh, clear your mind of everything and then it helps to build that that muscle of focus number five uh, learn study techniques that work for you so in the past what courses did you do well with what kind of things did you do was it because you were passionate about that subject you spent more time on it was there a particular time of day that you did that think in your past what worked and also think what doesn't work uh, if you're never you know if you're always struggling to pass courses and get assignments due then you can kind of analyze well these are some of my bad habits and so you can look at habits that you can substitute for those habits to improve you don't want to try and 20 new habits at once but definitely slowly building in uh, habits over time is going to definitely uh, accelerate your ability to be successful and as we say start the semester off right and learn about different methods of learning as I said I'm going to bring this into this video series I'm going to do one per week uh, for the semester and there will be different methods of learning that I'll bring into um, the fold there's so much information available today there's there's no reason for you not to make that effort because it's going to it's an investment it's an investment in yourself and that's going to give you positive rewards as a result and as I said learning then becomes a real thrilling and enjoyable process and now you now you're on the upside now you are going to start to reap the rewards and it's going to compound over time the last one I kind of put is kind of a, a different one. I haven't seen anybody else sort of talk about that, but get to know your professor before you need to know your professor. Usually I get to know some students re really well the last week of school. Out of nowhere they appear and all of a sudden they want to get a pass, right? So these are the students that have procrastinated. You know, let's, I have a lot of empathy for students. So some of them have some real life conditions that have been going on. Uh, others, others, it's a little bit of a snow job that they're trying to pull on you. And sometimes they think that they're, you know, even if you give them a chance, they think, oh, I, I got one over them. They got nothing over me. It's over yourself. Because at the end of the day, even if somehow you manage to squeak through a pass, you really didn't learn anything. Whatever profession you're going in, most professions, they're not kind to people that don't put the effort in and you built these bad habits and so yes uh, a college degree uh, that you got through by the skin of your teeth uh, may get you a second interview or may get you to start in the job but it's not going to make a career for you um, so really uh, it's about building relationships it's about building good habits it's about uh, learning how to better yourself and if you show up you know, wasn't it uh, the, the old saying, if you show, showing up is like 90% uh, of it? Well, show up, get to know the professor, ask questions, uh, say hello, right? If it's an online class, turn on your camera. 
you want to stand out, you want to differentiate yourself, turn on your camera. Very easy. Uh, and I can tell you, every student that turned on their camera, I pretty much knew them by the end of uh, the semester very well. Uh, or show up, you know, if you're not there, and then all of a sudden I see you on the last week, I know I don't know who you are. So uh, definitely ask questions, introduce yourself, stand out from the crowd. If you're struggling, say it, say it, because there may be some tips that can be uh, given to you that teachers seen probably hundreds, if not thousands of students take this course before. They kind of know where they struggle. They can point them in the right direction, give them some advice, and sometimes just getting a little bit of motivation and engagement going with there and a connection is helpful. So um, don't be afraid to do that. Make sure that you get to know your professor. It's worth the effort. And professors like it too. I like it when students uh, introduce themselves and they really want to um, get to know a little bit about you and you want to get to know a little bit about them. It also helps me if I'm pointing something out, if I know where your interests are, that can always be um, useful as well. So that's what I wanted to cover today. This was me at the uh, Toronto Central Library. This was the first day of my sabbatical, uh, 2018. Uh, so I thought I'd start off the first day by, uh, where else? Going to a library to start studying for, because I, I thought I'd do the PMP as one of the things that I would do. CM Lean was another thing I did. So I was back to being a student that year. And so in these tips, I'll try to provide you with some of the lifelong tips that I've learned, both as a professor, but very much as a student and a lifelong student. So I'm Tom Stevenson. If you enjoyed this, uh, click the subscriptions and notifications so you'll see new ones as they come up. And have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.